and welcome back to Divine Lou Design Studio. For those that don't know, my name is Nicole Reed, and today we are here for another take on the humble bowl cozy. Now, yes, I have made a video showing you how to make the bowl cozies. In that video, I show you how to measure your bowl to get the right size squares that you need to make your bowl cozy. In this video, I'm going to talk about the darts and what you need to do for those if you are making bigger bowls. And um, we are also going to do it in a different shape. As you can see, our corners are squared off and it gives it sort of like a um, little bit of a hexagon look to the bowl cozy. So let's get started. actually sewing there is one thing that I just want to make very clear to everybody before they start sewing and I will repeat this throughout the video as well you really need to make sure that your for your bowl cozies especially if you are going to use them in the microwave or maybe a family member might mistakenly use it in the microwave while you're not home to tell them otherwise you want to make your bowl cozies in 100% cotton. So what does that mean? That means that your exterior fabric needs to be 100% cotton. Your batting, that's all we're using today, needs to be 100% cotton. Okay, so when I'm talking a clean cotton, I've often referred to it, some cotton batting, battings will have like little specks through it. It will have like, it, sometimes if you feel it, there'll be little hard bits in it. You want to avoid those because sometimes they can actually be cotton seed that is still left in there and they are flammable and we do not want them going into our microwave. So I cannot stress enough that everything that you use for this tutorial today needs to be 100% cotton. So that includes your bobbin. A lot of people forget about their bobbin. Put some cottons, 100% cotton thread in that and just mark it with a C and I go over this a little bit more in the video. So let's get started. All right, so we are here to make a bowl cozy and yes, I know I've done another bowl cozy before, but today we are making a different shape as you've seen and basically what we need is the same as what we needed in the original um video that I did which I will card up the top here you're going to and the one thing I'm going to stress again is if you are using these in the microwave or you run the risk of someone else using them in the microwave you, the safe bet is to just use 100% cotton in your fabric in your batting and also in your bobbin and top thread on your machine that is imperative because what can happen with anything that is a mixed blend or polyester or anything like that you run the risk of it catching on fire or at a minimum melting so you want to avoid that at all costs so everything needs to be 100% cotton you can use for the batting if you've got wrap and zap you can use that I struggle to find that in my um, area so I don't actually use that I just use 100% cotton all right so basically we are starting out with 10 inch squares on everything so we need two pieces of um, fabric at 10 inches and we need two pieces of batting at uh, 10 inches then what you're going to do is you're going to pin your exterior fabric to your batting and you're just going to put the pins on the straight edges and then we're going to make a cross now when it comes to our machine we want to and our stitching we want to elongate our stitches to a 3.5 okay this is a nice thread that I have found so especially for those that can't uh, that don't have access to a walking foot you don't need it for this. You can actually just use your regular um, foot on your machine and basically you just elongate your stitches. Now, if you want to use a walking foot, by all means, grab a walking foot, put it on your machine. I don't actually have one here today. It is on my other machine that I use for quilting and that is in storage at the moment, waiting for the repair guy to come. So <laughs> I uh, threw the tension out on it, so I needed it to get service. So I'm just going to be using my regular foot today and basically all we're going to do is we are going to do a quilting a basic quilting technique and that is just to do a cross on both of our squares so let's go ahead to the sewing machine and do that all right once we get to the sewing machine we've elongated our stitches and we're going to start with the needle in the down position okay and then we're just going to slowly stitch across now I like to have my wadding on the top and my fabric on the bottom because that's a lot smoother and it's going to go through the machine a little bit better so I know that we have our bobbin 
thread on the bottom but I actually like doing it that way I just find it it works a lot easier I get less puckering and then all I need to do is just follow the um, lines and stitch that down And then I'll grab my second piece and I'll just chain piece these through. Okay, so once we've done that we want to just snip that apart we can now remove our pins and you can see there that it doesn't really matter that it's the bobbin thread down the bottom it's still really nicely um, stitched and you can see it's quite a long stitch and that way it is not puckered or anything here in the corner so now what we're going to do is we're going to what we do to one we do to the other just like the other video except we've got a few different things to do this time so basically what you're going to do is you're going to get your right sides and place them together like so and get any rid of any long threads that might be in your way and then you're going to get your wonder clips and you're going to clip this then what we're going to do and i've got these little rulers that i use and i'll leave a link down below where you can get them and then because it's one inch we need to go in on this side here we need to have a mark at the one inch mark so it makes it nice and easy we just place the ruler on the fold okay and then we get our friction pen or our pencil or any pen it doesn't really matter and then we're going to come down two inches so we've gone up one and then along the fold we're going to come down two inches okay and we're going to make a dot either side and then what we will do is we will actually draw a line joining those dots okay and then we're going to do exactly the same on the other side so come up an inch and then down two And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to stitch on that line and as i said what you do for one you do for the other now i had a lot of questions um, about darts because that's what we're creating here about darts from the last video when we enlarge because the last video shows you how to measure your bowl and how to uh, what size squares you need to cut and everything like that and so i've had a few questions about the darts now I don't have any special formula that I work out. I do basically a mock-up. And when I say a mock-up, what I do is once like I've got this here. Okay, I'll show you what I do. So say I wanted to make a bigger bowl. So the, the darts have to come in a little bit because the bowl is thinner at the bottom and it's wider at the top. So what I'll do is I'll actually still only come in by uh, an inch and then I'll put a pin there and then I'll come down by two inches and then I'll do the same for all four darts and just do a mock-up and then I'll just sit the bowl in it doesn't matter that it's in the wrong way or anything like that and I'll sit the bowl in and just see what I need to do and then what I will do is I'll slowly adjust and I usually adjust by uh, this one at the top here I usually adjust by a quarter of an inch increments and this one here i usually go down by half an inch increments okay so you, you can see here i've got one inch here and then it's two inches down so if i go a quarter inch here i come down a half inch at this point hopefully that makes sense to you and i just do a mock-up and i'll use wonder clips or pins or whatever to get an approximate size that i need for the dart in most cases right up to a 12 inch i generally just use this dart here um I have with some bowls if they're a little bit fatter at the bottom I have um, basically just gone a little bit further maybe an eighth or a quarter of an inch on the two inch measurement but again I just mock it up until I get a nice snug fit so that is my best advice to you because every bowl is different you could tell me that you have a bowl that's 15 inches but it could be 
15 inches where it's narrow at the bottom and then extends out the top so we would need to adjust this one up here a little bit as opposed to this one here so it's a bit of a mock-up and then just whatever you whatever measurement you get as you go around just write it down so you know for your next time you make one for that particular bowl because I've had a lot of questions about salad bowls and stuff like that I am going to make one up in in the next couple of weeks I've got a big bowl um, and I've actually got two different styles of bowls so I'm going to um one's going to take a little bit longer to play around with so um as I said I have to do the mock-up for them all right so that is the best advice I can give you for the darts for bigger bowls okay but today as I said we're just working with the 10 inch like we did in the last one all right, so for today's uh, 10 inch one, you basically just go in one inch and down two. And we're going to do that. What we do to one, we do to the other. So we've got these first ones, we'll sew them down and we're going to stitch on the line and you want to back stitch at the beginning and at the end. Okay, so we've done that now what we need to do is we just need to trim off about a quarter of an inch you can just eyeball it. it doesn't matter if it's a little bit smaller so we're just cutting a little triangle out okay and then we'll do the same for this one okay so you can see there we've created our dart now we need to do the same for this side and I just line those darts up that we just done and I'll put a wonder clip there. We just get it to lay as flat as we can. All right, and then we just grab our ruler again and do exactly the same thing. Okay, so now once you've got that all stitched, what you need to do is cut off all your threads because we don't want them to get in the way. Remove our wonder clips. And you can see there that we're starting to get the shape of our bowl cozy. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to... Oh, didn't want it to turn in that way. We're going to snip off our little pieces that we need to get rid of. So once that's all gone we can now put our bowl cozies together so we want to turn one in the right way and one in the wrong way so our pretty sides are touching okay and then what we're going to do is we are going to line up our darts and we'll put a wonder clip there okay and I'm not worrying about really anything else at the moment I'm just going to worry about lining up my darts you can use pins too. It's not that thick that you can't use pins. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place some wonder clips here and here on each of my corners. And I want to just come down a little bit because we're going to do something to these corners in just a second. All right, and I'm lining up my stitch marks. So you can see there I'm lining those up. So they're lining up nicely. So we get like a flow of the stitching because these are reversible okay so once you have clipped this all the way around we're just going to lay it down flat like so and then we're going to take our ruler and we're going to come down about half one and a half inches so with this ruler my half inch mark is my center line here that thick center line so if you've got a one inch ruler these are really handy to use and then I can just line up the corner of my fabric at one and a half inches and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to make a line. Okay. And then I will join that line across here. Okay. And then we're going to do that for all four corners. And you only need to do it on one side, so that's okay. If you don't have a one-inch ruler, we, all we do is we come down lining it up and so this is a six and a half inch ruler so all I've got to do is line the points up on the five inch mark 
and then I can draw my line. All right, so once we've done that, what we're going to do is we are going to snip off our corners on all four corners so we can get rid of those. All right, so we've snipped off all our corners and now what we're going to do is we're going to leave one side open. Okay, so we're just going to leave this side open and we will start here and we're going to do a quarter inch all the way around okay now when we're doing this you want to actually do um you can actually start a little bit in if you want and only have a small hole to pull your bowl cozy through it is going to be harder to do um through the smaller hole so i always like to just leave i mean i'm coming in quarter of an inch anyway because that's where i'm starting my um stitching to go all the way around and then that way when it comes time to turning through I've got a little bit of a bigger hole to turn it through all right so making sure when you start you and finish you do a back stitch at the beginning and at the end and you're going to leave your needle in the down position because we've got we're going to come down here and then we're going to have to move our bowl cozy slightly we want to make sure that our stitching is all lining up so leaving the needle in the down position on your machine will actually help you to pivot a lot easier as you get to the corners all right so i'm going to head over to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch this down So when I come down to a dart, what I like to do is, as I said, I leave my needle in the down position and I come right to where my stitching line is and then I will pivot. Okay, and you may need your tailors all um, to help you along the way. So grab that as well or your stiletto. And you can see that, I don't know if you can see or not, but I've stopped on my line. And now what I'll do is I'll lift the needle up and I will pivot just a slightly so the edge of my presser foot will stay on the edge of my bowl cozy. And I'll just slightly turn that and then follow that line again. And then I'll just stop a quarter inch before I get to the edge and then I will turn. There's no need to back stitch or anything. And again, I will stop a quarter inch before I get to the edge. And if you look at your quarter inch foot, there are actually marks on your um, quarter inch foot that you can use to help guide you. So there is a quarter inch mark. Um, so it'll st if I line the edge of the fabric up with that mark on there, uh, basically what will happen is then I can I know when I stop it'll be a quarter inch away and when I turn you can see that my fabric is a quarter inch matching up with the the toe of the um, presser foot and then I can just continue on Okay, so we, you can see here that we've gone a quarter inch all the way around, except we have left this one side open. Okay, that's where we're going to turn it through. But before we do that, we just want to um, make sure that we've got a nice uh, seam allowance all the way around. And I do that by grabbing my pinking shears and I will just cut these corners off and not get it too close to the edge of my, um, to the stitching that I've just done. And you can see there that I'm just evening it all up. I'm not taking too much off, I'm just getting rid of some of that bulk in some of those areas. So when we turn it through and top stitch it, it will be a lot neater. Okay, make sure that you don't go into your uh, stitching that you've just done. Okay, now I'm not actually going to pink the edge that I'm going to turn through. So we'll leave that. All right, so now all we need to do is reach in, go to one of your corners and push it out. 
and as you can see it's nice and easy having that side open all right next we're going to just run our finger along our seams that we've got going on and our darts and push everything out Now, once I've pushed all my corners out, what I like to do is I just get into this corner here where we've got our opening. I like to just roll my fingers along the seam and that helps to just get it to sit a little bit neater as well. I'll just roll that backwards and forwards and then it'll sit nicely. And then what we're going to do is give it a really good press. All right, let's grab our iron and our ironing pad. Now, I'm just going to lay my... Um, bulk cozy and I'm just going to our edges that we cut off which are what would normally be our corners I'm going to give them a really good press first okay and the reason that we're doing this is because we're going to top stitch this and so we want our seams to be sitting nicely before we top stitch them okay and as I said I will basically turn this through and this can be a little bit tricky because it's got so much bulk on it so what I do is I just use utilize my wonder clips to hold that quarter inch seam in and you just tuck it in and, oh, and then pop a if I can pick it up a wonder clip on I'm not going to well I've already pressed it <clears throat> as much as I can so what I'm going to do I'm going to take one wonder clip off at a time, but I'm going to hold it in place with my tailor's awl. Then I'm just going to use the tip of my iron and give that a really good press. And that's just going to help it stay in place. And then I'll just pop that. I will just pop that wonder clip back on. And then again, I'll just use the tip of my iron. All right, so that's just going to hold that close for me. You can use pins if you need to. And glass head pins are pretty good for when you've got to iron stuff. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to focus on these darts. So you can see there, I'm just putting my finger in and holding it at the bottom. And then at the top, I'm just rolling that so it sits nicely. And then I'm going to give that a press. And then I'm actually going to put Wonder Clips all the way around. So it all holds itself in place properly. Okay, because we don't want too much of this rolling out to the outside. We want it to be even. And then once I've pressed it, I'm just going to pop a Wonder Clip there. And if you find that your other seams are moving, then by all means, put Wonder Clips on. They do help to hold everything in place, especially for top stitching. So you can see there, I'm just manipulating it so we can get the iron in there and give it a really good press. And as I said, that is going to definitely help hold everything in place and flatten everything down. Okay. And while it's hot too, you can, it helps because you can finger press it across those seams. All right, so now what we've got is we've got our closure here, so we're going to have to top stitch that. And what we're going to do with our top stitch, like always, we're going to do an eighth of an inch. Don't forget that you've got your stitch length already elongated, but if you wanted it to be a little bit longer, by all means, um, lengthen that. But I'm just going to stick with the same so they all match. But you can see there that it is totally reversible. All right, so let's go over to the sewing machine and top stitch this down. Now, with my top stitching, I only back stitch when I get to the end. I don't back stitch at the beginning because I find with my machine I get a nicer finish. So, if you get little bird's nests or anything like that, or the loops up on the back on your bobbin when you're doing a back stitch, my advice to you is only do the back stitching when you get back around to the thread. You're also going to want to have your needle in the down position so you can manipulate and move everything while you're sewing along and it's not going to change the trajectory of your stitching if you struggle with an eighth of an inch seam allowance you can do a quarter inch seam allowance on this by all means go for it um, just do whatever you find easier now you can see on my machine i've got this little mark here um, that is set up for my eighth of an inch so I just set that up on my machine it's just a little bit of washi tape it can be easily removed it doesn't actually put any sort of um, stickiness or anything on my machine after I remove it and I just line it up the edge of my fabric up with that so if you find that to be easier for you just do that um, a little bit of washi tape goes a long way with sewing start with our needle in the down position 
and as you go you can just remove those wonder clips that's just to help you hold everything in place now when we come to our um, seam you can see my seam just here where's my pointer so just here I've got a seam you can see that just on the edge there what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch down until I get to that seam and then I will stop in that seam and then I'll be able to pivot that's if I'm having trouble getting the the fabric to move so you can see here it's sort of got a bit of an angle so we want to come down to that okay stop in the seam and then pivot so then that bit is straight and we're going to do the same at all our corners and all our seams hopefully that makes sense to you um, it just when you're sewing different shapes you can have all sorts of problems so it's better to have your needle in the down position and then that way you're not going to run into any issues keep a hold of your stiletto and then that way you can um, use it to help you okay so I've stopped into my seam now so I will lift my presser foot and then I'm going to turn it and you can see there that I'm still sitting at the eighth of an inch and then I will continue on now there is a little bit of bulk in those seams so just be aware of that okay and then I'm going to stop an eighth of an inch before the edge there and I'm sort of just eyeballing that and then again I'm going to lift my presser foot up and I'm going to turn and then I can start removing some of these wonder clips. Now this is our closure. Did you notice that I did not start on my closure, the part that I need to close up? I started on a, a seam that was already closed up because it's going to make it easier when I come around here. Instead of trying to start where it runs the risk of popping open, this way I can um, hold it with my stiletto, keep everything in place, and um, the needle's already in the machine we've already started stitching and we're not going to have any issues all right so put our net press foot down holding it with our stiletto and we're just going to continue on now because this is a straight edge we don't have to stress too much we can just start removing our wonder clips and again we're going to stop an eighth of an inch before we get to the edge all right so now that's got our closure done we we don't have a hole in our um bulk cozy and we can just continue on all the way around till we get back to where we started and we'll do a back stitch there so now that that is all top stitch you can give that a really good press and you can see here that it's an eighth of an inch all the way around now the reason that I um and I know that I'll get a lot of questions because I often do when I start doing my top stitch I only do a back stitch at the end and the reason being is as you can see here it is hard to see it and it's the same on both sides now your machine might be different and it might go nicely with a back stitch at the beginning at the end but my machine tends to sometimes do little bird's nests on the back so to avoid that and not have my stitching come undone I basically um just yeah do it at the end once I've gone all the way around you can also see that it's really hard to tell where our opening was as well okay and that is using that eighth of an inch holds everything together but that is our bowl cozy our bowl can go into that now and you can see it's nice and easy to pick up this is not the right size bowl for it <laughs> this is a little bit bigger than what I need um, so yeah so basically 
you can use these not only as bowl cozies, you can use them for uh, wonder clips, you can use them for just sewing notions to put in beside your sewing machine. It just helps to neat and tidy it. It's a different shape than the normal one and uh, I hope that you like this video today. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I do hope that you enjoy the this take on the bowl cozy. I do have a few other um, cozies coming up in the near future, so keep an eye out for those. And while we're talking about keeping an eye out for things, the best way to do that is actually to subscribe to the channel and then that little bell icon that you see, hit it to all notifications and then that way you're not going to miss out on any future uploads that I have, especially for the different takes on the bowl cozy. So as I said, thank you so much for joining me today. Day. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up down below, share it across the socials with your friends and your family. And until next time, have a great day, happy sewing, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.